So let's go. It's your music and lifestyle, fashion profile, the entertainment source for everything you want to know about. North to the south, the east to the west side. Stay connected with Ruben Torres worldwide. So let's go. Across the globe, well respected. Beasting on the industry. Check it out, man. We're in National City. We're going to go check out the homie Carlos Barragan and his son David. Over here at the Community Youth Athletic Center in a beautiful national city, San Diego, Cali. Let's go see what's cracking. One of the mile of cars in National City Boulevard. A lot of stuff be cracking off here in National City, man. One of the things people don't know is uh, they used to call it Nasty City, and uh, it's cleaned up a lot. Um, a lot of, lot of controversy with this spot right here in particular. Um, they try to close it down, shut it down, and, and uh, build other stuff. So it's, it's, been, uh, it's been difficult for these people to stay open and, and, uh, and do what they do for the community. So let's look at the story. My name is Carlos Barragan. My name is David Berrigan. I'm 19 years old and uh, I train here at CYC. Grew up here in National City, but in 1991, rather than complain about the problems in the city, my father and I decided on putting up one punching bag in his backyard. And from one punching bag, we went into 35 kids in his backyard and stayed there for about a good three to four years. And we loved what we were doing with the sport of boxing. I was basically raised in the boxing gym, so, you know, it's, it's a family thing, my, my brother, uh, everyone, my uncles. We started out with a punching bag and in my backyard moved into a facility where, uh, right there in, in Shelltown and uh, we just kept on shaking and moving. We incorporated in 1998. From there we, uh, we were looking to expand so now uh, we moved into our facility that we're on right now is uh, in 2006 and now you know we offer the sport of amateur boxing. Now we have a school and, it's, and it's, it's incredible to see an at-risk kid that wants to play a sport and use boxing as a hook, where before they would say, well, Carlos, you know, you, you're, uh, you're teaching them violence, but now we're getting the kids to school, we're getting kids to graduate from school, we're uh, doing community service projects, we're going into the community, and it all started out with one punching bag. I've been boxing for around, I would say, 10 years now, 11 years. I've been doing it since I was eight years old, so I'm 19 now. When my son was 15 and 16 years old, he was ranked number two. When I was 30, 14, I won a National Silver Gloves title. Uh, uh, when I was 15, I won, uh, I got a silver medal in a Junior Olympic uh, division. And uh, I was supposed to go to the Nationals again the next year. And he did several camps. He was traveling. He was uh, on his way to uh, maybe make an Olympic appearance. In fact, uh, a lot of kids on that team uh, we're actually on the USA Olympic team. So we were, we were really, really, really excited about what was going to happen. But, uh, you know, in life there's always going to be stumbles. There's always going to be obstacles. And so after a tournament in Marquette, Michigan, he was sent back and we were getting ready for the national championship. So me and one of my friends here at the gym, we, were, we went to go for a run. And uh, when we were done, we we're heading up the street. And we get into the car and we're driving up uh, here, Euclid Avenue, here in National City. We're driving over the ridge and I see a Mustang coming full bore. He was open, came over the ridge, caught some air, and he blindsided us. With, and and uh, when he hit us, he actually rolled his car on, our, on the foot of our car. And uh, during the incident, I'm looking through the, after the crash, I wake up. My, my face is bloody and my son's in the passenger seat and uh, he begins to pray, God, please take care of us. So I look down to my feet, but I can't feel no pain, so I think I'm paralyzed. So then I begin to pray, God can, uh, don't let me be paralyzed. So I felt, I squeezed my legs and I felt some pain, so I thought, you know what, I can handle these broken bones. 
So during the wreck, the driver was a drunk driver. He was a young kid, about 20 years old. He had killed his wife in the crash. So uh, he had a 19-year-old girlfriend, 18-day-old baby in the car. So uh, comes to find out when my, when my son gets out of the car, he has three fractured vertebrae. And so he couldn't walk. So they lay him on the ground and they take him into the hospital. I was in the hospital for like around a two days. And the first thing they wanted to do when they see my vertebrae crack, they wanted to do surgery. Uh, but then my grandfather wanted a second opinion on, you know, because I still wanted a box. You know, I've been doing it since I, was, since I was eight years old. I've been doing it for so long, you know, I didn't want it to end there. So uh, they checked him out. His, his uh, heart rate was really, really low. He was in great physical conditioning. And so what they did is they put him in this gladiator suit and they would monitor the bones fuse back together. Now, if they didn't fuse back together and, uh, and cover up the fracture, then they would have to fuse it all together with pins. But so they tried this and they uh, they begin to monitor the actual bones and then the bones begin to, you know, uh, cover them, the fracture up. So it put me out for about, for about uh, three, four months. So I had to go to therapy again, try to get back into it. You know, it was, it was rough and I wasn't able to make the 2018. So it set me back. And uh, now that I'm getting back into it, I'm starting to, my muscles are starting to get back, get back together again. And uh, it's getting back to, to where I used to be. And looking back at it, now that I can look back, you know, you begin to ask why. But uh, I think it really strengthened my family. It strengthened my boy a lot, where now, you know, uh, he's working really, really hard. Now we started making a transition back. In fact, we leave July the 11th to the Colorado Springs Olympic Training Center to begin to make the qualifying again. We just won uh, last month in, in Los Angeles for an opportunity to make the team. And he had a really good win with a young man out of Los Angeles that is touted as a, a very talented kid. And David came and he beat him. So now we're off to July the 11th and uh, ready to make a comeback.